It's time for Over There with Morella Rostrofer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. She is in Switzerland, I think still. Maybe she'll be moving soon. We don't know. Hi, Morella. What's going on? How are you? Hi, Jill. Um, it's all good, and you are absolutely right. If uh, Switzerland continue to... Uh, improve uh, so fast it's going to be possible to travel very very soon and um, even though COVID-19 is not part of our conversation today um, uh, I can I can just uh, add to that that, that uh, Europe and also Switzerland um, are working on a COVID pass and uh, which will be like a, a, a code uh, on on the phone, most probably, that will allow um, most people to travel uh, freely during the summer. So all of this is definitely uh, good news. Um, what I thought would be interesting for our conversation today is the incident uh, that happened with um, the famous uh, tennis player Naomi Osaka, um, born in Japan but uh, raised in uh, the United States. Um, right now, uh, we are having in Paris um, the um, Roland Garros, uh, which uh, is... Um, uh, obviously, uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, tournament, and uh, one that is extremely prestigious to uh, be part of. And um, Naomi uh, Osaka decided to uh, withdraw uh, withdraw from uh, the French Open. Um, she pulled out of the year's uh, second Grand Slam tournament. And um, even though she's world second ranked, um, is only 23 years old, though, um, she uh, has a very, very um, uh, big fan base. Um, and so that came uh, all a little bit as a surprise. Um, then, of course, the question is, so what happened uh, to make her uh, decide on uh, something uh, so abruptly, uh, especially considering that she decided to do that after uh, uh, playing very uh, successfully? Um, she explains on social media that she suffered from some periods of depression since the 2018 U.S. Open, uh, where she famously defeated Serena Williams, uh, which was uh, in itself a very complicated story because Serena Williams herself had issues with uh, the uh, judges uh, on, on, on that day. Um, nevertheless, Naomi Osaka won, um, but since then she says that she was uh, having some trouble with uh, with her mental health. Um, what happens in Paris? Uh, what happened in Paris is that she did not want to speak to the press during the French Open. Um, she was. Um, uh, very polite in her explanation, saying that she has uh, full respect for the journalist and uh, she is very sorry if she offended anybody with uh, with her decision. But uh, she did not want to speak with journalists during the tournament. Um, would be happy to do so afterwards, though. Um, Allegedly, the French Tennis Federation uh, president, Morton, tried to speak with her and other people in the organization, but apparently unsuccessfully. Uh, so on, uh, on that note, she uh, skipped 
uh, the, the, the press uh, conference after her victory over uh, Patricia Maria Tig and was then, for this reason, fined $15,000, which is quite an amount, I must say, um, but probably reflective of um, the amount of money that they earn during those tournaments. Um, she got also threatened that eventually, if she continued on that uh, path, she would be excluded from future uh, Grand Slam tournaments, which is a very big deal and could be also a career breaker. Um, I guess with that kind of a threat, they thought that um, she would just uh, become more reasonable again. Uh, but she definitely didn't and just decided to uh, make a pause and come back to tennis when she feels that uh, she's able to do so. Of course, after such a, a reaction, there, there are many questions that uh, come to mind about this incident. Um some of those uh, have been expressed, of course, on social media by uh, many people. Um, and I would uh, say that the most uh, frequent one are basically why should a player speak to the press if uh, he or she or they don't want to? Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a legitimate question. Um, it, it, it truly this is in the contract and they have to fulfill the conditions of the contract but maybe it's it's the conditions and the contract themselves that have to be put into question um, as um, for example is tennis about tennis or about the press and 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 the judgment of the journalist um, is the reason for such an entitlement the fact that they earn so much, that the players earn so much money, and therefore uh, the public feels that the players, in some kind of weird way, um, belong to them? Um, and on the other hand, also, why is the leadership of the Grand Slam so negative in their handling, so destructive, so so threatening? And one could really wonder if there would not have been a better way to speak with her and uh, basically deal with this uh, issue a little bit more privately instead of having all of this uh, all over the papers. It seems like it was a little bit counterproductive put a lot of pressure on uh, on um, on uh, Osaka, pushing her to think that this was going too far and that in order to give back tennis to tennis and not being uh, the main point of discussion here, she decided to just uh, pull out. Um, uh, also, uh, another question um, is also as I said before, wouldn't it be time to review all the rules and regulation, uh, which in all honesty seem a, a little bit outdated. And while all other uh, worlds are going through major changes, um, and, uh, and, 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 and people are trying to basically, a lot of people are trying to make things more, more human and uh, less um, in, I mean, I wouldn't like to say dictatorial, but to make them just more accessible, um, make sure also that uh, sport uh, people don't have to always look like uh, the big heroes on planet Earth, but can also show some weaknesses and basically um, uh, show that they are human uh, beings like any other with um, a lot of talent, but some weaknesses as well. Um, I have read also a lot of extremely condescending articles about her uh, today uh, where there is a little bit this uh, 
um, this undertone saying that it has been like this uh, forever. And, uh, you know, if basically, if you cannot pressure, you are in the wrong business. And all of this um, can be perceived in, in a very negative way uh, from uh, someone that feels a little bit vulnerable, like uh, Osaka right now. Um, I think she also said that she felt that sometimes the questions from journalists were extreme, extremely repetitive and that they liked to emphasize um, her weaknesses, like uh, her being weak on clay, for example. Uh, and all of this is not a big deal in the sense that it's not that she doesn't want to hear about uh, the things that she doesn't do in a perfect manner. But admittedly, when you are trying to uh, concentrate um, and and overcome those weaknesses and and uh, you, as she says she's not a very natural uh, good uh, public speaker she's rather shy and um, she preferred to avoid those questions um, then it can it can be very invasive and uh, I think that's a little bit what happened there uh, also of course one cannot exclude that there are reasons that nobody knows really about as um, sometimes all of those uh, articles are also a little bit speculative, of course. Um, luckily, she had a lot of support from, uh, from other players as well um, and from her sponsors, which is, uh, I think, a very big deal in, uh, in, the, in the sport world and in, in, in business, generally speaking. Um, so, for example, Nike or MasterCard, uh, they, uh, they are completely coming out in support of her. And uh, other players like Serena Williams also said that she wish, uh, wishes that she could give her uh, a hug um, in spite of the fact that she is not fulfilling, fulfilling her contractual media obligations. Um, for some people, though, the problem was more a, a technical one in the sense that rules obviously have to apply equally to all players. And that's uh, that's a very fair point. Uh, and that if some players don't give uh, don't give interviews and others give. This is very time consuming. Um, it can be also upsetting. So basically it, it does create an unfair treatment. Um, and that's also the reason why uh, many uh, other observers are saying that uh, this is actually a very fair uh, comment, but that's also a, the reason why it's not just about that tournament and it's about, uh, generally speaking, uh, is there a way to change the system in order to satisfy, of course, the journalistic um, uh, curiosity and legitimate uh, public interest as well as the mental health and uh, freedom uh, of, uh, of the players. Um, I thought that a very interesting comment was from the extremely famous American Billie Jean King, uh, a 39-time Grand Slam winner, who um, said, while it is important that everyone has a right to speak their truth, I have always believed that as a professional athlete, we have a responsibility to make ourselves available to the media. Um, that being said, um, she also acknowledges in, in the same uh, um, tweet that obviously now with social media, things are a little bit different and um, function uh, in, in, a, in a different way. Let's not forget that she's 77, that Osaka is 23, which actually puts her in the Generation Z who definitely is a generation that is uh, willing to go through many changes and 
even I would say want many changes and that maybe this uh, incident is nothing else than one more reflection of uh, of generational um, differences. Um, the bottom line be, being that um, it is interesting to have an interview with a player only if that player is has actually something to say and uh, and 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 feels like talking about it. Uh, it's basically uh, by all means comes second after a really good match, a really good play, and um, that would be the magic of tennis with an interview maybe at the end being uh, the cherry on top. Um, so I think that in terms of reaction, um, this is not asking for a special treatment. This is asking for uh, maybe a different way of, um, of looking at, uh, at, at sport in general, at tennis stars specifically. Uh, and um, and making sure that uh, the public, as well as the players, as well as the journalists, have their fair share in uh, in what is considered one of the most um, uh, interesting um, sport um, every every season, going from Roland Garros to Wimbledon, and uh, others absolutely. Um, uh, super interesting uh, tennis uh, uh, events. Thank you very much, Marilla Rostroffer, over there. My pleasure.